hello and welcome to red live yeah and it's definitely been the week of musician lady zamar i mean she's come out as of late and uh, she's been addressing you know what happened between herself and Ustjava and i suppose the misconception and misinformation that has been going around according to her anyways so yeah she actually posted four videos in which she addresses those misconceptions now the first video let me play that for you guys real quick Hi guys, I'm here to address a couple of things that have popped up over the weekend. I just want to give clarity on some things and just say my thoughts. One of the more interesting things that have happened is the amount of people that have uh, vocalized their disapproval of me speaking out. I'm naturally a very avoidant person, so usually I avoid conflict, I ignore people, I ignore problems, and I never really say what is wrong, so I'll deflect a lot. But I've since decided that my narrative is my own and nobody gets to tell my story for me. And for a couple of years now, people have been telling my story for me. There are so many different versions of events, but sometimes it's kind of scary. One thing that has particularly caught my attention was a live that happened on TikTok on Monday dedicated to unpacking the tweet from Sunday um, that I had posted on Twitter. But what interests me the most about this particular life, I had not gotten a real sense of what people thought of the ordeal and me, um, mostly because I haven't spoken out in a while. Besides that one time I was so, so, so scared and I was shaking and I went on my Instagram live and I tried to unpack things and I ended up sort of messing that up a bit because there were, I was so scared, you know, and I ended up just going in a thousand different directions. This time around, I've had years to process, to heal, to finally be able to speak up and I can answer the one question that I singled out or the one misconception that I singled out that I find pretty, pretty annoying. And that is the actual chronology of what really happened. Social media says they don't forget but what I found in my particular case is social media has forgotten a lot. There are pieces of information that have been so misinterpreted, whether on purpose or not, that they have painted me out and made my character very, very questionable. If I was sitting on the other side of this entire thing, I would also think there's something wrong with my story. What I want people to understand is that I did not come onto this platform to advocate for my 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 victimization i did not come onto the platform back then in 2019 to even speak about the fact that i just wanted people to rally behind me i came to social media as a matter of need i came to social media as a matter of urgency i came to social media as a matter of safety so stay tuned for part two in which i will detail the exact chronology of events and try to address some of the issues. Copy part three and a part four. So in the first video, Lady Zama is just talking about her reason as to why she went on social media and also she explains why her first time going on that uh, live that she did on social media explaining what happened between herself and Us Java was so disorganized. She says that uh, it was all new to her and I'd assume that she means that, you know, talking about the whole experience was new to her and that's why perhaps for some people they misinterpreted what she said. But yeah, let's listen to part two of that. Welcome to part two and these are some of the things that I'd like to address, misconceptions and things that I've heard people talk about in this interesting live. There's this underlying desire that I hear from people to villainize me because they feel like there's no other option. There's also the narrative of being bitter and the narrative of being an attention seeker. There's also this thing you know, put together with that whole bitter thing, almost like they want to make me out to seem like some woman who wanted something and did not get that thing in the form of money. You know, I hear the narrative quite a lot of Mabuso coming up. It's like, mm, please do not compare these situations because they're not the same. I'm a fully fledged artist, holds her own, very successful. I do not need anything from anyone from my past. In order for me to have been bitter, I would have had to be the one that was left, which is not the case. In actual fact, I made sure that I got away and me speaking out was a finalization of that to say, please do not ever claim me again. 
The attention-seeking part seems to come from the idea that I just came to social media unprovoked and just shared my personal life with people. And like I've mentioned in part one, which you can go watch, I am not a person who shares easily and I do not share my private life with just anyone. Now you ask yourself, when did this whole thing start and how did it start? If you are curious, here are the answers that you probably seek. So chronologically, around the 5th or 6th of April, there were pictures that that person had posted on his social media, which were the images that are constantly used where we're wearing white clothes with a white background. Those pictures alluded obviously to a romantic relationship that was ongoing and that was not the case. I had called the individual and I had asked what is going on, why are the pictures on social media and he had answered and responded that he had been hacked and I said that is not okay with me, I am going to tell the public that we're not together and he begged me not to but I felt because that was my brand being tied to his, I needed to make it very clear. There had been lots of congratulations from other artists, there had also been a lot of comments from people who were saying oh my gosh. We did not know this is so great so for me it was imperative that i quickly squash those things by giving a blanket period of time with which we had been involved something that is important to note is that between that period and six months in, down the line there were a lot of things that happened however the thing of importance was the concert that happened with which i was called a friend of mine to tell me that i was trending only to find because of the pictures that had been leaked six months prior, people were now saying that I was a side chick and thus I decided to tell my story. So yes, in part two, I will say this, part two is definitely a juicy part of when it comes to these uh, misconception, misinterpretations of Lady Zama. Um, yeah, she does talk about uh, how people feel that she's an attention seeker, that she was looking for money from Ustjava. Personally, I've never really come across those, well, the attention seeker, of course, but the money that she was looking for, money from Ustjava, not really come across those particular rumors, speculations, misconceptions exceptions but attention seeking well yeah that one is definitely the one that does fly around a little bit more but she does go on to explain the pictures the pictures that obviously a lot of us uh, a lot of people actually use when it comes to Lady Zama and Us Java it is these pictures of course now she does explain that those pictures were actually posted by that person that person being Us Java without her consent and she does say that uh, those pictures were posted after her and Us Java had a relationship so people were coming through congratulating her only for her to realize that you know what uh, Java posted these pictures but we're no longer in a relationship just I'm assuming that he has removed those pictures I'm not about to scroll through Java's timeline all the way up until 2019 but nonetheless you know whether they were removed or not there's definitely someone who grabbed those pictures saved those pictures and they are out there on the internet but yeah, that actually kind of leads us to the reason why Lady Zama actually spoke out. So for those people that are saying that Lady Zama wanted attention, she does explain that the reason why she actually spoke out and wanted to set the record straight per se is because her brand is now attached to this and she didn't want to be attached to Ushjava. She didn't want to be known as the woman, the Lady Zama, who is dating Ushjava. And I will say this, that for me is a reason that makes sense. At the end of the day, Shava's the one who posted these pictures and people are coming through congratulating Lady Zama. And she's sat there like, why are you congratulating me? We're not even in a relationship. So I understand her coming through and setting the record straight. So for me personally, part two makes a lot of sense. And also she does mention that she is the one that ended things. So she's the one that, uh, you know, cut the relationships. But yeah, let's listen to part three. Welcome to part three. Just to continue, I had been invited to the one man show which, to which I had declined and I stayed home and I was baking the next day and a friend of mine called me the day after the concert and told me that, hey dude, you are trending. When I check the trending list, it's Lady Zamar side chick, Lady Zamar home record. To which the person who put me in the situation to begin with says nothing to address the fans and the people that are going on and on about the fact that I am a side chick. I've mentioned before that my brand is very important to me and I did not want to be associated with things that were negative and for me, having that type of title to be a homewrecker, to be a side chick was a very, very damaging label. 
considering the fact that I had not been a willing participant in the starting of that relationship to begin with. The entire time there had not been any discussions or agreements about being physically intimate. So when that thing happened, I did feel forced because I felt like I had gotten into that situation without my consent. And moreover, I stayed in the situation because I felt like I deserved it because I felt like I had walked in there willingly. I did not have to be there. And so the entire time throughout that relationship, I blamed myself. I stayed because I wanted to get something back that I could not put my finger on. But I also stayed because I felt like I had to stay. When I finally got strength, I decided to leave and run. Not just leave, run away from that situation. So can you believe my horror that the career that I've worked for and worked so hard on for such a long time was being tarnished by, again, unwillingly tarnished by something that someone had done carelessly without telling me, without consulting with me, and just deciding on their own to attach themselves to me in such a public way. And then going on to say that they were happy. From April up until the point that I told people that I had been sexually assaulted by someone, I had decided after working through it with a lot of the people around me that I would not tell anyone and I would end up writing a memoir one day which would detail the account when my career was no longer in jeopardy. I had decided to die with that secret up until that moment that my name came up and again was attached to being a homewrecker. Some, I'm a Christian, I have Christian values, those are not things that I can subject myself to. And thus, through a lot of pain, I decided to tell the public that this is actually what happened and I wasn't a homewrecker. In actual fact, I had been the one that had been deceived. I had been the one that had been hurt. I had been the one that had been abused. So yes, that is part number three. Lady Zamar is the one that has been deceived. She was the one that had been abused and then she decided to tell a story. Now she does mention in part three that she was, her intention was to tell this particular story later on when uh, her career is no longer in jeopardy but because things were you know escalating at that time you know she was being labeled a homewrecker i remember at the time it came out that java actually has a wife at home and people were now questioning who tao and then who lady zama ungen up in the picture so i do understand somewhat you know what she's saying about that you know that she felt that she needed to speak up then to clear up her brand her image all of that stuff it's all good and dandy let us listen to part number four welcome to part four and the final part i feel like it's very important for me to say this if you're dating someone if you're married to someone if you just have like a one night stand with someone even if you go to a prostitute and that person says no it's a no be it, be it male or female no is no people need to stop thinking that because there's a girlfriend status that you guys have agreed to have sex it does not mean that even when you want and she doesn't or when you want and he doesn't you can just force it because of your relationship status same as marriage marriage is also about honoring each other marriage is also about respecting each other so when a person that you're married to says no you have to take their no <clears throat> getting back to it just to finish this off i'd like to point out that i simply stated during that time that i had been sexually violated i'd been sexually assaulted next time given the progression of events i had been sent a letter to recount what i had said after that i was served with a defamation lawsuit which attached my name and which was basically demanding damages i went to the police station i recounted everything that had happened it felt like it had just happened the day before i cried the entire time i was there that was the very first time i had allowed myself to say the words and say them in a place that would actually have, would actually make a difference. Every time I think about that, every time I think about just how much pain I went through and I think about how I just never wanted to speak about it, I never wanted to talk about it and I've been put in the situation where I was being forced to defend myself. 
from something that had happened to me, I was heartbroken. And thus began the entire social media thing where now there were voice recordings that were leaked. Now there were people that I used to work with that were going on social media talking about me being obsessed with him. There was an entire smear campaign that was created to make me look like I was such a liar. There were narratives that came out that basically said I was paid by a record label. There were narratives that came out that said I had said things about his private parts which were completely false. Everything that happened was unfortunate. I don't know. These are the facts. Well, yeah, number four is the final and last one. I'm sure a lot of you guys are saying, oh, thank God. But yeah, she does state that no means no in that one and recalls having to retell that particular story to the authorities. Look, number four is the touchy one. I will say this. And uh, yeah, I mean, do get in the comment section down below and let me know what you guys thought about Lady Zamar clearing the misconception and the misinterpretation about what happened between herself and Ustjava.